Welcome. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, this presentation is about Verdigris, and Verdigris is, in a, is a library to use Qt without Mock. Um, so you all know what Qt is, but do you all know what Mock is? So in this presentation, I'll first start to present what is Mock that I'm trying to replace, and then what is Verdigris. So about me, I started with Qt as a student working on KDE. Uh, I then was hired by Trolltech to work on Qt, the Qt framework. And there I worked on many areas of Qt, including the object model. And uh, right now I'm working for Wobok, so this is my company. I'm doing consulting. I also have a code browser. If you haven't checked it out, you should. And uh, yeah, I'm doing uh, contract work. And last one is Qt for MCU. So I was uh, on the team working on the Qt for microcontroller. Um, so Mock is this tool that runs as part of your build when you build an application using Qt. It runs Mock behind the scene. And the purpose of Mock is to understand those uh, Qt macros that you add into your, your object class. So, um, signals and slots, for example, uh, are powered by, by mock. The, 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 the syntax from Qt1 using strings, so the uh, signal and slot macros, uppercase, change their arguments to, to strings, so it's a string syntax. And then we need mock to look up index from those strings. And also for this, the, the syntax uh, for, uh, from Qt5, you still need mock because it needs you still need to look up the signal index from the from the pointer from the function pointer. Um, the property system is used was made for for Qt designer, so you can have a property editor here on the on this thing with, which is all Q, Q properties. And it shows uh, enums, and then properties can be used by all those tools like QScript, QDBus, and obviously QML, which makes a lot of use of those properties and also those uh, slots and invocable and signals. And all of that is is uh, is powered by the mock. Um, and so the mock is going to pass the C++ header, and is uninterested in the in the layout of the class. So only which, which are the properties, which are the, the signals, the slots. And it will look at, at, those, at those, uh, those classes and it will, it will generate all the data, the introspection data, all the data that is needed for the, the signals, the slots, the properties to, to work. Um, it's important to notice that mock do not really rewrite your code. It writes additional code which is going to be compiled together with your code. The, the Q object macro is, is not magic. It's a bit big, but uh, the principle is there. It declares a static meta object. So th uh, this is a static, which is going to be implemented by the mock, and a few virtual functions, which are also going to be implemented by by the mock, so the generated code will contain the implementation of those, and also this, this static function. All the other macros are basically empty or, or very small. They just, to the compiler, it's just going to be, uh, signals are just uh, normal functions, public functions, and slots are just normal functions as well. However, the mock will see those and will Take that as attributes, and so it will know that it will it needs to take those those into account. Also, it will see that there are properties, and so it will know that th those properties exist. Um, the meta object itself is so this is going to be generated by the mod, and um, so the meta object itself contains a pointer to the parent meta object. It contains a, a bunch of strings, a lot of 
So this qubyte array data is just the, the data within a qubyte array. So it's generated at combined time byte array, so you don't need to allocate new, new data for the byte array. But it's basically a list of all the strings, as well as a list of integers, an array of integers which contains the actual data. And also quite important, this um, a pointer to a, a static function which contains the actual generated code, um, which we will see later what this does. Um, so let's have a look at this generated code. And if we want to replace mock, this is basically the code that we need to, to generate, although not with a code generator, but with templates and, and meta programming. Um, and um, the first thing that, that is going to be generated are the signals. So the signals are just a call to a function, to meta object activate. We, get, we tell this function which object we are, um, which slot, so in this, or which, which signal rather. So in this case, it's the, the, the signal number zero. And finally, an array of, an array of pointers and just pointers to the argument. Um, then the other part is the, where the, the the location where we call the slots or the, the invocable method. And given an index and an array of arguments, we're going to call this function. The array of arguments is the same as the one that was given from the signal. So the, the arguments are on the signal stack or the, the stack of the, the thing that invokes the, the slot. And um, we, know the, we know the type. So this, we have an array of pointers, and since we know the type of all the, all the parameters, we know that it's the right type because at when we do the connection, we know that we connect a string to a string. So we, we know the type. Um, the same system is there to read or write a property. So we will use again this, this uh, array of pointers to store the, the location of the return value or the property we want to set. So this way we can give an index of a property and, and a pointer to the value, we can set this property or, or get this property. And finally, we have all the strings that are required for this object. And all the strings are put in a big, in a big uh, string literal with all the strings together, separated with zeros. Um, it's only one string, so that means that there is only one relocation. Uh, um, if you have programs with many, many strings, that means that it, it takes, at the beginning of the program, a small amount of time to, to relocate. Um, the mock generated code is optimized, so there is the least possible relocation order, or a, a, a small amount of relocations. And then we have this macro, qmoc literal. It's a macro a bit like qstring literal, but it's going to generate a qbyte array, um, the, the, the data for the qbyte array that points to the, the right string here. So basically, we have an array of, of string, an array of qbyte array. <coughs> Um, and then the, the integer data. Um, this shows how many signals we have. So this, this number is, for example, the, the amount of, of signal, um, the, num the number of methods. We have two methods and the locations where the index of in where the method starts. So that's index 14 and index 14 will be here. And so here we have uh, all the methods, so signals and, and slots. The name first is the first. So that's the index in the array of string. So it's the first, back, back, uh, sorry. back in the index of string, we see that the, the zero is the, the class name and the, the first name is the, the signal name. And so 
basically what we have here is basically some indexes either in the string array or, in, or within this array with the descriptions of all slots and signals and methods and properties and enums and everything is put together in this integer, integer array. So then the question is, can we do that without mob? Can we generate this information um, without having a, a, a tool that pro process the code? And the answer is yes, we can do it. And it's using uh, this library called Verdigree. So what is, Ver is Verdigree? It's a header-only library that provides a set of macro that can be used instead of the cute macros. And it's 100% compatible with the code generated by Mock. So you can also, that means also you can mix and match. So you can still use Mock for most of your classes and only Verdigree for the classes that, ne that needs it. It uses C14 uh, constant expression and templates to generate the data that we've just seen. And it has support a few, uh, a few new features that Mock doesn't support. Um, so here are the macros. They're a bit more complex than the cute macros, but they're also not that more complex. So the one difference is that we need to, instead of W, so most of the macros, instead of starting with Q, they start with W. Why W? It's, it's just the name of my company. That was a, was a so Wabok was the name of my company. So it's just a placeholder. I didn't know the what was the name, then I gave a name to the library, but the macros had already a name, so historical reason. But yeah, everything starts with W, and instead of for Q object, you will need to repeat the class name within the, the macro. And in addition, you need to add another macro, but this time in the implementation, so in the C++ file, and this will expand to the, the generated uh, with some code that will generate the mock, uh, the meta object. And so you would put that into the, the C++ file because you do not want to have that in every translation unit. So for slots, you, in Qt, you just use public slots, but in, in Verdigree, you would declare your slots as a simple function, but you would need to register it with this uh, W slot macro. Uh, same goes for signal, with the difference that you in for slots you need to declare it, so you can either put a semicolon or you can also have a curly brace and the implementation. But in signal you would not have that because the W signal macro will implement the signal right there. So the the W signal will will expand to the implementation of the signal, and this will call QMet object activate. Uh, since it needs to know all the arguments of the function. You need to also pass the names of all the arguments in the, in the macro. So the signal, the, the signal macro both registers the signal and also implements the signal. And then for properties, um, it's also almost the same. It just needs for the macro to work. You need a comma here, where, where in Q property you didn't have this comma. But otherwise, it looks exactly the same. And that's it. Um, so here is the, the same class as before, but I've replaced all, all the cute macro by fair degree macro. And uh, yes, and then you don't need to run the mock on this, just the compiler. And this class will be exposed. You can expose it to QML or call signals and slots on them, just like just just normally, nothing else to do. Yeah. So there is even some additional supported features. We support templates. So Mock doesn't support templates. Uh, that, would, that would not be completely impossible for Mock to support templates, but, but there are some challenges with the build system that it needs to generate <laughs> headers instead of generate uh, just code. And so uh, with Verdigris, is no problem, you just, you can use template. 
Um, another feature not supported by Mock is nested class. There is no really fundamental reason why Mock doesn't support that, but at least Verdigris supports it. With overload, it gets a bit more complicated. Um, as you know, when you connect to a signal or a slot that, ha that has overloads, you cannot just name the, the slots or the signal. You need to cast it to, some, to the exact function signature or have some other helper to, to cast it. And so here as well, when you register a slot which has an overload, you also need to, to add in, a, as in the macro signature, you need to add the, the arguments as the second parameter. And that's also for signal or for method. Unfortunately, you also need to register the types that you're using. So if you're using a, uh, a custom type in the slots of signals, you need to register with this uh, W register arch type. It is just to have a mapping between the name and the type, and this is not the same as um, QDeclare meta type, so it's different. And normally you get a static assert if you forget, if you forget it at compile time. Unless when you when you specify the when we specify the type as if it was overloaded, then then you don't need to specify. Well, you can, but you don't need to specify this because this automatically registers the type. So how does it how does it all work? Is it is it magic? Well, in a way. Um, so in order for this to work, those uh, those uh, signal and slot macro then somehow need to register a state. Um, so this has changed since the the way the way the state works has changed since the last time I made a presentation about Verdigris. Um, it's now much faster to compile. Um, and this was contributed by Andreas, who is here in the, in the audience and give a, a talk later. So the way the state works is that we have a state function who takes uh, as argument a specific tag. So in, in, it's going to be signal or slot state or property state, um, a pointer to a pointer to the object. And so this is a bit funny to have pointer to pointer, but this is just to have a type information in there, and it's pointer to pointer to be sure that there is not automatic uh, casting. So if I so for example, I don't want a Q object pointer to be converted to a Q object pointer. And so we have this function here, and it just return it, it just return void. Um, but the magic will happen in the implementation of the signal and slot macro, where we will implement it for the in for for a given index, so say index one, index of one, index of two, index of three, and then it will not return void, but it would return uh, some type which contains all the information about the signal or the slot. Yeah, in order to do that, we just need the W object to have the W object will forward to the normal Q object macro, but of course this is not going to be seen by QMake or by Make. So mock would not be called mock would not be seen that because there are some if def to make sure that mock doesn't see that. Should you run mock anyway, and um, and we need as well to uh, to have a type so so like we can refer to the type of this current object. So this is how we. This is basically the the magic. Um, be, be behind the, the slot macro and the signal macro. So we, we're going to use this intermediate macro called state happens, and it's going to declare a function. It's a const expression function. It's a friend function. So it might, um, in, in case, uh, this is not very well known, but you can also declare declare friend function within the class, and it's just normal function in the current namespace. Um, and so this, this has as well the, the three arguments, uh, the tag, 
the pointer to the pointer to the type. It's going to return uh, whatever we pass. So in this case, it's going to be the, the, the sig signal or slot information. And it's going to have and the, the, the first argument is the index. And what's the index? So we want for the first slot to be 0, for the second slot to be 1, and so on. So how can we, how can we compute this number? We're going to call this count function. And um, this count function takes a few parameters, including uh, the point of the point, uh, all those parameters. Uh, let's, let's look at the count function. So the count function will check the type of calling w state with an index. We'll start with 0. So w state with an index 0 for the given state for the given type. If it's void, that means that we called the function we declared a few slides earlier. That means that there was no, 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 no signals on slots yet. So we're going to just return 0. However, if it's not void, that means that there was a signal or a slot. Um, so we'll call it again, but this time with one. We try again. Is there a, is there a, a first, is there a signal with index one? And so this basically will find out the, the signal at the index. And this works because at the time the count function is called, so I went back one slide. Uh, at the time the count function is called, this function has not been declared yet. So it doesn't see this function yet. It only sees the previous function. Uh, yes, so this function, the way this function is written in this, in this slide is, is linear, so that would be slow to compile. So in reality, we check for, is it there for 2, 4, 8, and so on. And then when we found it, we go back, we do a, a binary search. So it's log n, but yeah, didn't fit on the slide. Um, so then the actual slot function will, up, will up, uh, happen as a state, and the state will contain all the, all what we need for this signal or slot. So the pointer to the function, the string representation of the name, and so on. And then finally, we have the, the w object imp macro, which is going to be expanded to the actual static meta object. And we're going to call a const expression function create meta object. And then, well, I didn't put the whole thing in the slides, but it's basically a lot of const expression to go over this whole state, to generate this string array, to generate this integer array, all of that in const expression function. So with C14, uh, this is, you can do almost everything at compile time. So we can generate those arrays. And then we can generate the, the meta object. So we can compute what's the parent meta object. Um, we can have all the strings and all the int. And that's it. Um, so who uses Verdigree? Um, so there are actually users of Ver Verdigree. Uh, um, one point of the reason why they, they told me they use Verdigree is because, surprisingly, it speeds up their build time. So I wouldn't... The compiler is kind of slow to compile all, all of this. And I would think that mock could be faster and probably is. But the, the problem is that mock cannot be parallelized with their uh, build farm. So the compiler is parallelized to their, uh, all their computers, but the bottleneck was to run all those mock sequentially in their build system. And that's one of the reasons why they moved all their code. In a, so, for example, OCS Core, they started to use Verdigree in a few class because they needed to use templates. And then uh, they moved the whole code to Verdigree because they realized that it was speeding the build. Um, another user is uh, uh, 
software, and he's going to present in the talk after mine what he's doing with Verdigris. Um, so in conclusion, um, I, was hope, I hope that from this talk you learned a bit more about how, how MOOC works and if there was ma still magic to you, that it's less magic now, and to present Verdigris in case you don't want to use MOOC. Um, so before asking questions, I'm expecting uh, at least a question about Qt6. And uh, I'm not going to answer this because I don't know what Qt6 is going to be like. Um, I know that there, there are going to be changes in Qt6, but uh, removing mock completely is not a priority for Qt6. Um, but I hope that, and also uh, we, don't, we don't know exactly how the, the, what the property system and things will be, be like, but um, hopefully um, we can still have something either in Qt or as a third-party library that also do not force to use mock. Let's see. Um, so, is there any questions? Uh, what's the license of this? Ah, uh, it's LGPL, same as Qt, but since it's a, since it's a header-only library, then uh, yeah, the, the, the LGPL for a header, header library is kind of uh, free, liberal. Is, is there any difference in execution of the code between the original mock and your library? Is um, it faster? So there, there shouldn't because it's the same. It generates the same. The, the meta object that is generated is going to be the same. So in principle, it's going to be the same. It's, it just, it's just another way to generate the same thing, either with a code generator or with template. But in, in the end result, in the binary, it's going to be the same. Do the connect calls from Qt5? Um, with function pointers still work? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, is there a tool or a script to transform automatically a Q object uh, source code in a W object? Uh, Right. right. So uh, there has, if you go, if you go to the Git repository and in the pull request or bug, there is a link to one of, to one Python script that does that. Otherwise, I know some people have written dirty regex, but uh, I, nothing is published. But uh, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. So no, there are some prototypes of tooling, but not nothing really production ready. Um, so crime um, mismatch with double object with Q object, like like having a like in the same target and some are Q object and some are using double object together. Yeah, I'm not sure I understood the question. Could could you repeat, please? Like, like say in the in the same target of a Q make target and I have some Q object actually using Q object macro, but some of them are using double object macro and like mismatchment together. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Okay, yeah, yeah sure, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, if he mixes um, uh, classes with uh, W object and Q object in the same uh, ah, yes. Uh, library, or yes, 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 it, it's complete. It, it's completely compatible, so you can mix and match. You can even run mock on some code with W object because uh, there is the right uh, macro code to to tell Mock, ignore this, please. So Mock will just ignore it and everything will be fine. Yeah, thank you, Olivier. <laughs>